It's hidden behind the scenes and oftentimes not talked about. After any metal parts have been machined, there's almost always some sort of little imperfection, a little bit of extra metal hanging off the end of a part, off of an edge or a corner that needs to be removed. We can't have these little flakes hanging off of a corner and then go through all of the plating processes or the other finishing processes and assembly and let that part just that piece break off inside of a movement and float around so we have to do something called deburring what is deburring it's removing little extra pieces of metal that are not supposed to be there and may have formed during the manufacturing process. There's always going to be some sort of extra material that's been pushed onto an edge and is sitting there just waiting to cause a problem in a product so finely detailed as a watch. I have a couple examples here. This is actually a main plate kind of dangling here, hanging by four little tiny tabs. And it's been machined out of this brass plate. And it might look pretty nice from, from a distance. But when we get up close, we can see that not only do those little tabs leave sharp burrs, but in every hole, there's little flakes of brass. And if we were to plate this as it is with rhodium plating or a nickel plating or gold plating, those burrs would manage to come loose at a later date, fall into the movement and bind up in the wheels and the pinions, cause extra wear on all the moving parts. So this main plate here is a main plate that was machined on a robo drill machine, which is a type of three axis mill right here in our workshop in Nashville. That's why we have to do the deburring on it because we're making the part in our own workshop. Other parts that come from somebody else's workshop, say from Switzerland, those parts would go through their deburring process in Switzerland, uh, either at their own workshop or a third party that does the deburring for them in the processing. So from here, we have to use a number of specialized tools. We have different tools such as countersinks, like this one. It actually has a hardened steel end here, and it's just a circle that we can place onto a drilled hole twist it, and it will remove that top corner. Anything that's loose there will come off. We also have things like scalpels in all kinds of different shapes. Now for watches, we try to never have to use something like this because the risk of damaging a part with such a large blade is just too great. However, on something like this, we have a tiny little spot here where there's a burr that's just too thick to do anything else about. We have to cut it off.
Some other tools we use are small files and the files come in all different shapes. This one happens to have a rectangular profile. The sides are flat and parallel and we can file off tabs. If I file this tab off too aggressively, I'll end up with too little material. So it has to be done just right. All of this is very fine work. And sometimes we even have to make our own tool for certain types of burrs or certain sizes of holes, different challenges we might find with new parts. And that tool making aspect is one of the most important parts in watchmaking. Knowing when an existing tool is not right for the job and being able to make the right tool for that job. Now ideally, all the burrs could be removed in the manufacturing process. Meaning, after we drill a hole, we use a CNC machine with a countersink type tool to then go in and remove the burr after drilling. It saves a lot of time, but it's not always practical on lower volume to be able to add so many extra tools into your machines and so much extra programming time. So if you're producing a smaller number of parts, you probably won't economically be able to set up all of that deburring in the manufacturing process and it will be a hand deburring afterwards. Other methods would be media blasting. And media blasting is like a sand blasting, right? But we call it media blasting in watchmaking simply because sand seems so rough, right? And sand is all different size grains. When we talk about media blasting in watches, we talk about a very particular media of a certain diameter. And the two medias I use in my workshop for this sort of thing are 35 micron and 50 micron. And that's glass bead. And these glass beads, we shoot those out of a nozzle using compressed air onto the part and into any hole we might need to remove some material, deburr, uh, because we're not trying to change the dimensions of a part. That's the exact opposite of what we want to do. We want the part to remain the same size. We just want the extra material to be removed. So we need very fine media blasting equipment that's not too aggressive, that it would change the shape. There are some burrs that are actually best removed in an ultrasonic bath. The screws that we deburr here in our workshop, we put those screws into an ultrasonic tank with a polishing liquid. There are solutions you can buy, but we made our own solution so that we could get the abrasive qualities that we wanted without removing too much material or damaging the surface finish. The ultrasonic waves moving through the liquid that we have inside the ultrasonic actually creates little bubbles. And those bubbles go onto the surface of a part. And when they hit the surface of a part, they pop and there's a little bit of an explosion on the surface of that part. With the screws, we need the surface to be almost as machined. We just want those burrs to fall off of the part while they're in the ultrasonic tank. That's the goal with that solution that we have them vibrating around in uh, for about an hour. And of course, after the parts are deburred, then any kind of abrasive material, any finger oils, dirt, cutting oils, anything like that, we have to clean that off before we can move to the next step. A 
oftentimes the deburring of a complex part can take longer than the machining of that part. And that makes production really tough. It's why complex, low volume parts, such as a main plate like this, can be quite expensive. Even though all of this machining takes place without any human intervention, we place brass into a machine and the machine cuts it, we take it out. It's not good enough to go into a watch at this point. That hand finishing is what separates a fine timepiece from a regular timepiece.